In this video, we're diving into how to set up block list rules in Bitdefender Gravity Zone version 6.61. One of the most effective ways to stop malware, risky scripts, and even malicious connections in their tracks. What's going on everyone? My name is Eric Hunsaker, and on this channel, we cut through the fluff to help you stay safe online, understand your cybersecurity tools, and make smart decisions when it comes to protecting your digital life. So without further ado, let's get into it. What is the block list in gravity zone. So what exactly is a block list? Think of it like a digital do not enter list for your devices. You can block files, scripts, or even network connections before they have a chance to execute or reach out to a bad actor's server. In gravity zone, Bitdefender's enterprise grade dashboard, block listing is a tool that you can use to add these red flags, either manually or automatically. If you know a certain file is dangerous, maybe a known ransomware payload, you can block it by its hash. If there's a suspicious script running from a specific folder on several machines, block the path. And if malware is phoning home to an external IP, you can block the network connection too. What's new in version 6.61? With Gravity Zone version 6.61, Bitdefender made some pretty useful upgrades to the block list system. First, they expanded the file types you can block block using application path rules. So now not only can you block .exe files, but also .dll, .js, .vbs, and .ps1 scripts on Windows. If you're working with Mac OS or Linux endpoints, you can block .dylib and .so files too. Second, they added a feature that lets you toggle each block list rule within individual endpoint policies. Before, if you added a rule at the company level, it it was either on or off for everyone. Now you've got more flexibility, especially helpful if different teams or departments need different levels of access. Requirements before you start. So before you start messing with block list rules, let's make sure your setup is ready. First, you need a business security enterprise license. The block list tool is part of Bitdefender's EDR, the Endpoint Detection and Response Package. Second, depending on the rule type, you may need certain modules installed on your endpoints. For hash-based rules, the EDR module needs to be active. For application path rules, you'll need the content control module installed. For network connection rules, make sure the firewall module is running. It's also a good idea to make sure all endpoints are syncing with the Gravity Zone console properly. Otherwise, rules might not take effect. How block list rules work. So there are three main types of block list rules in Gravity Zone. Hash-based rules, application path, rules and connection rules. So let's go through each one. Number one, blocking by hash. This is probably the most precise option. You take the cryptographic hash of a file, like its digital fingerprint, and you tell Gravity Zone to block it from running. So to do this, we're going to go to incidents, block list, click add rule, application hash, and then enter the hash, either MD5 or SHA256. Name the rule and optionally leave a comment for context. Assign the rule to the right policy or group. Now once saved, this rule is enforced across any machine where the policy applies, assuming it has EDR active. Now a good tip, you can get hashes from Bitdefender's own incident reports or your tools like Virus Total if you already have the file. So let's go ahead and walk through that together. Now if you don't already have a Bitdefender plan, you can go ahead and click the link down in the description to go ahead and get started with one. After you are logged in, this is what your Bitdefender should look like. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna come over here to the the left hand side under incidences and we're going to go ahead and click on block list so to block by hash we'll go ahead and click on add rule right here and we'll select application hash so we'll enter the file hash either md5 or sha256 for this example we'll do md5 here you can add a note i'll put something like subscribe for more and this is where you'd go ahead and enter the file hash and then we'll just assign it to the correct group so uh, i only have one group Group here so I'll go ahead and just leave it as is and then you just go ahead and click save it's as simple as that Two, blocking by application path now this is great for blocking anything that runs from a specific folder maybe you want to stop a user from running installers from their downloads folder or maybe there's malware that keeps popping up in a temp directory to create a path rule we'll go to the same menu incidents and then block list choose add rule application path and and 
then just paste the full path link, which we'll go ahead and show on the screen here. Then set the operating system, whether it's Windows, Linux, or Mac OS. Assign the rule and save. Just remember, to use path-based rule, the content control module needs to be installed on the endpoint. And be careful with wildcards. If used carelessly, they can block too much. So to go ahead and do that, let's go ahead and come here to incidences under block list. We'll go ahead and click add rule and we'll go application path. Here we can add another note, something like subscribe for more. And we'll go ahead and type in that application path. And then you can go ahead and select your group and click save. Three, blocking by connection. So this rule blocks outgoing network traffic to certain IPs or ports. If your investigation shows a program reaching out to a malicious command and control server, you can shut it off here. Here are the steps. We'll go back to the block list page and hit add rule and select connection. Then enter the local or remote IP address or both. Add the port numbers if needed. Name and assign the rule. Now keep in mind, the firewall module must be active for these rules to apply. So we'll come back here again under this block list. We'll click on add rule and we'll select connection this time. Here we'll give it a rule name. We can give it a note and then we can choose the application path. So you can scroll through this list here and fill out the remaining information. Once you're done, don't forget to hit save. Applying and managing rules and policies. Once you create a rule at the company level, it becomes available in your block list table. But to actually enforce it, you need to enable the block list toggle in the endpoint policy. So here's how. Pick the policy assigned to your endpoints. Go to anti-malware block list and make sure the toggle is set to on. Choose which rules to enforce under that policy. This gives you a lot more control, especially if your company has departments that need different security levels. Here's a real world example. Adding a rule from an incident. So let's say you're reviewing an incident in the Gravity Zone dashboard. You see that a file called invoice.exe was flagged during a detection. From there, you can click on the incident, locate the file hash or path, click add to block list, and the rule is created and pushed to the relevant policy. Boom. Now, no other machine will accidentally run that file again. You can also use the Gravity Zone API to add rules automatically when new threats are found. The API method add to block list supports all three rule types and can be used in security automation workflows. So here's a super simple workflow walkthrough. It's quick step by step. Confirm requirements. So ensure that your endpoints have EDR, content control, or firewall installed depending on the rule type. Create a hash rule. So again, we'll navigate to the blog list and add a rule. Application hash, paste in SHA-256 from a known malware sample. Assign it to your default policy and create a path rule. Add a wildcard path like C colon slash temp slash malware dot exe. Select Windows as the operating system if that's what you're using and assign and enable it under the content control policies. Add a connection rule. Enter the IP of a test malicious server. Add port 443 if it's HTTPS. Assign to endpoints with firewall module. Enable block list and policy. Toggle it on under anti-malware settings. Confirm endpoint sync status. Verify on endpoint. Try running blocked file and watch it get blocked instantly with an alert. This shows just how fast you can go from detection to protection. Tips and best practices. Use wildcards wisely. So wildcards can block whole folders, but use them carefully. You don't want to block legitimate apps by accident. Monitor the block list over time. Old entries may no longer be relevant. Clean up periodically to avoid bloated lists. Document why you added rules. Always add a comment when creating rules. This helps you and your team remember the reason later. Don't rely solely on block lists. Block listing is just one part of a strong security strategy. Use it alongside behavioral scanning, sandboxing, and user education. So Gravity Zone's block system in version 6.61 gives you a powerful way to shut down threats fast. And now with more flexibility and better support for scripts and cross-platform files. So whether you're reacting to a new threat, tightening security for a specific team, or automating responses with the API, block list rules are your go-to tool when you need to slam the door shut on bad actors. Now, if you want to get started with Bitdefender or any other products that we recommend, you'll find links down in the description below. These are affiliate links, which means we earn a small commission when you use them at no extra cost to you. And these commissions really help support the channel and allow us to continue to create free content just like this. So if you end up using them, we thank you so much in advance. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss another video. Here on the channel, we cover everything from VPNs and cybersecurity 
to how to stay safe online and detailed product comparisons. So be sure to subscribe. But other than that, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you here in the next video.